Welcome to the Fluby Dust series. This is a series of videos that will cover miscellaneous topics in electrical engineering. This video is about the op amp gyrator, often called a simulated inductor. It's predominantly used with small signal applications in place of an inductor in a resonant circuit, where otherwise the real inductor would be large and more expensive. We will also be deriving the math for the gyrator from scratch. The formulas most likely found on the internet work, but they are quite mysterious. I think seeing the derivation from scratch helps with the understanding of the gyrator better. What is an op amp gyrator? It's simply an active simulated inductor. One significant constraint is one end of the simulated inductor is connected to ground. Its frequency of operation is limited by the op amp, so it cannot be used at RF frequencies. It's more perfect than the inductor, as it has no interwinding capacitance like a real inductor would. The series resistance is included. This is like the effective series resistance of a real inductor. In resonant circuits, it's useful for adjusting the quality factor, or Q, of the circuit. The inductor parallel resistance, which represents core losses, is simulated, just because it is essential to the way the gyrator circuit works. This resistance in the gyrator model is almost always large, so it has minimal effect on the operation. It is real, however, and it's simple to take into account. Also, due to op-amp output limitations, it cannot be used with high-power applications. You are probably wondering, what can we do with an active inductor that has this restriction of having one end connected to ground? The first thing that comes to mind is an RL high-pass filter. Most are familiar with the response of such a simple, single-pole high-pass filter. Let's write the transfer function using the voltage divider formula. Multiplying by 1 over R gives us a standard form of a single-pole high-pass transfer function, or abbreviated where tau is the inductor time constant L over R. Here are the values that gives us a cutoff frequency at 1 kilohertz. Let's set aside that transfer function for a moment. This begs the question, why involve an inductor when a high-pass filter is needed, when it could just as well been done with a RC high-pass filter? Here's the voltage divider equation. Multiplied by SC gives us this transfer function, once again abbreviated with tau, replacing the time constant of RC. We get the exact transfer function we set aside for the LR filter. Here's the components for the same 1 kHz cutoff frequency. Is there another application where a simulated grounded inductor can be useful? Graphic equalizers for audio systems. They are widely used in everything from live music sound production, musical instruments, home stereo, and more. The application of audio equalization is trending toward digital, but the gyrator use in the analog equalizer is not even close to extinction. The filtering is done with a resonant series RLC circuit. Since the order of components in the series circuit doesn't matter, the inductor can be the component connected to ground. Since a gyrator has its own purposeful series resistance, the resistor and inductor can therefore be replaced with the simulated inductor, aka the gyrator. As an RLC resonator, the capacitor is the only component needed outside the gyrator, and its design value would be resonant with the gyrator's inductance at the desired frequency. The gyrator's series resistance would be set for how much boost or cut would be desired. Here's how it works. It's really quite simple. We already established that a series resistor and a shunt inductor is a high-pass transfer function. The series C1 and shunt R1 in the gyrator make that same high-pass filter function. It's followed by a unity gain op-amp buffer, so V out 
equals V2. The output is fed back to the VN port through RS. The value of RS can be designed to suit the desired Q of the inductor. For the sake of observation, imagine that DC, the capacitor is open, and the input is just R1 to ground. This means V out is zero volts, just like a shunt inductor to ground. At high frequencies, the capacitor is like a short, and the VN equals the V out, like a shunt inductor would be an open. Here's the formula for the gyrator's inductance. Isn't that very odd looking? You are about to see a significant amount of circuit analysis and algebraic manipulation just to be surprised at the end that all of it reduces to some simple equations. In 1980, I scored a copy of the Audio Radio Handbook by National Semiconductor. It had the math for the gyrator, including its application for octave equalizers. There were huge leaps in the algebraic steps, and I gave up on getting through it. The final equations worked, and I didn't need to know the derivation. Decades later, I tried harder. I just couldn't let it go. I couldn't find the derivation anywhere else. Finally, I discovered why I was having trouble. That book had several topographical errors in the equations that were leading me down the wrong path to understanding it. Once I got it corrected, it all made perfect sense. Here's the approach for solving this riddle. We will derive an equation for the passive equivalent impedance with the Laplace S terms isolated and do the same for the active circuit resulting in the same form with the S isolated. We will then set the two equations equal to one another and make observations based on the relevant component values. Before we get going, I made a pledge in these videos. No algebraic steps left behind. We begin with the formula for the impedance of the equivalent passive circuit. This is simply L and RP in parallel plus RS. We want to rearrange it into this form with the S, the complex frequency parameter, is isolated. To add RS, we make the common denominator of SL plus RP, then adding the terms in the numerator. Distributing RS into SL and RP gives us this. Factor out SL from the first two terms. Remember, we are working toward isolating S. Divide top and bottom by RP plus RS. Then multiply RP plus RS. Finally, to fully isolate S, multiply the top and bottom by L. You can see we have achieved in getting this into the form we desired. Moving on now to the active circuit, since the op amp is configured for unity gain, V2 equals V out, which is the voltage divider of R1 and C1. Then multiply the top and bottom by SC1 to get rid of the fraction in the denominator. Again, we want to manipulate it into this form. The input current has two paths. One path is through R2. Since V2 equals V out, the current is V in minus V2 over R2. The second path is through C1 and R1, making the standard assumption that no current flows into the op-amp non-inverting input. The current through C1 and R1 is Vn over the sum impedance of C1 and R1. Multiplying the top and bottom by the right side by SC1 to eliminate the fraction. We will now replace V2 with the equation we made for V2 from here, making a common denominator to subtract terms. Now the VI SC1 terms cancel in the numerator, which simplifies to this. Let's get rid of that pesky R2 on the bottom of the left side. Multiplying by 1 over R2 accomplishes that. To add the left and right terms together, we need a common denominator, 
So we multiply the right term by R2 over R2, then adding the terms in the numerator. Now factor out Vn. The input impedance Zn equals Vn over In. So substituting In gives us this. We must keep going to isolate the S terms. Multiply the top and bottom by 1 over C1 R2. This gives us numerous opportunities for terms to cancel, which simplifies to this. To isolate the last S, we multiply the top and bottom by 1 over R1. 1 over R1 in the denominator flips to the numerator, and finally our equation for Zn. It is now in the form we desired. Here's the formula juxtaposed with the Zn formula for the passive model. We will now set the passive model equation equal to the active model equation. Since they are both in the same form, we can make some observations. We can see out front of the numerators, Rp plus Rs is the same as R1 in red. These terms in blue, added to the S in the numerator, can be equated. We can then substitute Rp plus Rs for R1. Rearranging to solve for C1 allows us to cancel the terms Rp plus Rs. And we are left with C1 equals L over Rp Rs. Moving on to the denominator, in green, we can say Rp over L equals 1 over C1 R2. Rearranging to solve for R2, then substituting L over Rp Rs for C1. All the terms cancel except for Rs, so R2 equals Rs. We can also take the equation above and rearrange to solve for C1. Recall that R1 equals Rp plus Rs, and therefore Rp equals R1 minus Rs. We also concluded R2 equals Rs. Therefore, we can replace Rs with R2. Finally, replacing Rp with R1 minus R2 gives us the equation to solve for C1 based on the other chosen values, and the equation rearranged to solve for inductance. Let's put the gyrator to use as a band reject filter. Here's the passive version and the active equivalent. At resonance, the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance is zero. So L and C2 together in series is a short. The attenuation is a voltage divider between R3 and Rs. Since Rs equals R2 in the active model, we can replace Rs with R2. Let's say we want 20 dB rejection at 1 kilohertz. That's a voltage gain of one-tenth of a volt per volt. Now rearranging the gain equation to solve for R2. Let R3 be 3 kilo ohms. Plugging that in gives us 333 ohms. The Q of the simulated inductor is the same as the real inductor which is the inductive reactance over the series resistance. XL is replaced by the inductance formula for an inductor, 2 pi F0 times L, where F0 is the frequency at resonance. Rearrange to solve for L. We'll let Q equal 2. This yields an inductance of 106 millihenries. I'm selecting R1 to be 100K, this is a typical value. This resistor needs to be large, as to not introduce the effects of core losses, but not too large, since it will carry the bias current of the non-inverting input of the op-amp. We can now calculate C1, which results in 3.19 nanofarads. Now, to determine the value of C2, we must make its reactance be the same as the inductor at the resonant frequency. Setting the inductive reactance equal to the capacitive reactance and rearranging to solve for C2. C2 results in 0.24 microfarads. In summary, gyrator design is very easy 
and the equations are very simple. I believe the derivation helps to understand its operation better. That band reject filter we just designed could have been achieved through other various op-amp active filter topologies. However, the gyrator is key to a graphic equalizer circuit that does a cut and boost with one potentiometer. More on that in a later video. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.